Google calendars literally manage my entire life. From being a content creator, a mom, and managing all the different projects in my day-to-day -day life, I literally depend on Google calendars to keep me going throughout the day. I've tried other platforms, but they don't seem to work and really hit the way Google calendars do. I've truly mastered down organization and productivity within Google calendars. So let me share with you how exactly I use Google calendars to keep up with my day-to-day -day productivity. Hey, hi, hello. I'm Mike. Myra, I am your favorite productivity loving Slytherin. So let's go ahead and hop on over to my computer so we can get down into the nitty gritty and hopefully be able to really get you up and running with Google calendars and elevating your productivity with it today. We are here on my personal Google calendar. So let's start off with just showing you the overall layout to get started. So on the far left hand corner here, we have the create button, really easy to create an event, task or schedule an appointment right there right below it monthly overview you can search for people below the monthly overview we have our calendars now you can add several different gcal calendars this is what makes gcal so perfect for me being a content creator and collaborating in that aspect and also collaborating with family i have like my personal calendar as well as my buy my repeat account of course planners and wine and then we also have a family shared calendar as well so there are several different calendars that you can have and be able to look at your overall day. I really fell into the trap of thinking I had time to do a recording for the podcast when in reality we had an event going on with family or I had something already scheduled for my personal content. So being able to have all of the calendars in one is a blessing. And if you still want to have your calendars attached, but you don't want to necessarily see something, you can always uncheck it so that it will remove that certain calendar from your overall view. On the left hand side here, right in the middle is the overall view of the calendar. Right now I have it on a week. You can change your weeks to be a Monday start or a Sunday start, completely up to you. If I do have it on the week view, if we go over here, on the far right hand side, you'll see the word week and a drop down button. So once you click on that, you can view your calendar any way you would like. You could just do the current day, the week, month, however you want to view it. Uh, if you are more of a Monday through Friday, you only use this for work, you can take off show on the weekends. So GCal is truly customizable to your needs and that's why I just fall in love with it. And I've tried Notion Calendar, but I still come back to this because everybody has a Gmail account. It's so easy to collaborate with. So let's go ahead and hit this settings button right next to your weekly view. And then we get into how to customize it. I mentioned before that you can actually change the day of the week. And here is where that magic can happen. So first you can change your date format. I love month, day, year. I know some people like day, month, year, or year, month, day, however you want. There's so many different options there. Obviously you can change your country and language, your time format. So if you're more of a military time person, you can change that there. So I do have this check to ask to update because it gives me that mental reminder like, okay, when I'm scheduling things in the calendar, once I see that pop up, I do need to adjust for Central and Eastern time zone to make sure. So we are both on the same calendar. If she does something, and I hop in, since I am in a different time zone, it will prompt me for that. So it gives me that mental reminder. Also comes in handy with traveling. So if you travel a lot, it gives you that prompt if you are in a different time zone. So you just don't mess up like for appointments. Personally, I keep it on all the time. You can add a world clock, your event duration, defaults, things of that nature, invite list, anything you can customize right here in settings so personally i do a lot on the weekends, so i do show my weekends i can see if you're just a nine to fiver and use gcal for mostly work you can definitely uncheck that so you don't see the weekends at all i love seeing the declined events if you don't want to see that you can uncheck it complete a task i love most of these are really default actually i'm going to add show week numbers because i do love seeing that in my planner so i would love to see that in my gcal as well and again, more custom things that you can play. So start week on, you can do a Saturday or a Monday, start the week on a Monday. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to a Monday, but you do have the options to start it on Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. Overall view, so how many days that you wanna see, how many weeks that you wanna see, 
and I'll continue to keep scrolling down you have more and more options so this is probably where you want to start when you are GCAL so let's go ahead and hop back over to my overall view if we look over here on the left hand side we the wheat is here in gray I do love that I love that is grayed out because I probably would get confused with the day so I do love that it is gray but you turn it on and off however you like Typically, when I come over to sit down and plan out my week or just get a quick overview of what's going on, I like to start in a monthly view. So right here where it says week, I drop down to monthly view. This allows me to get an overall view of what's going on and also what is coming up. Um, I love just kind of seeing everything together. So I can kind of just plan ahead and not put way too much on my plate before I really like honed in on my GCAL. I really would tend to overbook myself a lot and think I have time when I necessarily do not. So this is my overall view. Like I said, when I come to start planning and adding things to it, I like to look monthly. Sometimes just seeing like, whoa, this month is very busy. Let's maybe not plan out a post date night or something this month. Maybe that's something that we can do next month. Like seeing it overall instead of just seeing the weeks firsthand really gives me that that view of everything that I'm doing and if it's going to be a crazy month or if it's a little bit lighter and I have time for it. So after I view the monthly view, I do go ahead and hop right on over to the week. So this is a view that is most important to me, actually where I spend most of my time in GCAL. And honestly, it's just kind of an overview time blocking for me. And it works perfect with different appointments and keeping up with that as well. So as you can see, I do use a little bit of color blocking right now. I'm in my browns and greens era. So that's what it is given right now. Y'all know I am a proponent of making things beautiful so you can come back to it. And we'll definitely touch base on how you can actually change up the colors per calendar, but more on that in a bit. So overall, like I said, just time blocking. These are things that I absolutely need to do, appointments, things of that nature. Just like in the overall monthly view, I like to look at the weekly views to see where my time is going and if I have time to add anything in. So for example, for this week, probably Thursday is pretty clear for me. I literally just have my scheduled walk and most of the work day is pretty clear. So if I needed to take a call or schedule a meeting Thursday, maybe even Friday will be best for me. Whereas I have several different things going on on the other days and typically I try not to do too many calls or overall meetings on the weekends if I can help it. So it just allows me to see where my time is going and if I have any time to add anything more. Now, y'all know I am a proponent of making things beautiful so you can come back to it. And that is no exception here with GCAL. I absolutely love changing up the colors of my calendar to fit the mood that I'm in so I can continue to come back to it. Right now I'm in my neutral browns and greens era. So as you can see on the left hand side, all of my different calendars have this brown, green, beige kind of thing going on. Now, if you want something a lot more vibrant, if you're in your pinks and blues, you can definitely change it. One thing that I absolutely love about GCAL is that they allow you to put in the hex code. If y'all know me, y'all know I am a hex code ho. I absolutely love searching up on Pinterest and looking up different hex codes and different color combinations with the hex codes on it. And that is exactly what I did for this GCAL as well. What you wanna do to go ahead and change it, if you wanna just keep it simple, click on the three dots next to the calendar. And then you have all of these lovely, lovely color options if you just wanna pick from them. But if you want to do custom color, you hit this plus sign here. And then you can drag it, use the color wheel, or you can enter in the actual hex code. So where I like to go to get other combination is actually Pinterest. It's absolutely free. They give you the hex code. You can see color coordination. There are so many different color palettes that you can pick from. If you're like me and a sucker for like names and all that good stuff, it's gonna be there. And then of course, right up under it is the actual hex code. So you can get that exact color. Only thing I wish with Google Calendar is that we can do the drop pin on different colors just in case you aren't able to actually get the hex code. You're still able to do a custom color, but 
Pinterest got you covered. Most of these color palettes, colorways have the hex codes on it. So but definitely check out Pinterest to find a colorway that fits your needs. Another thing that I absolutely love about GCal is scheduling in habits and things that I want to make a priority in my life. Right now I am scheduling outdoor walks. I have been working out a lot inside. And I know for me having an outdoor walk and being out in nature really boosts up my mood, makes me feel great. So I have been actually scheduling them in my GCal, so I cannot forget. I also talk a lot about this in my productivity video. I definitely will leave a link up above so you can learn a little bit more about time blocking and really scheduling things that is important to you to make sure that you get not only your productivity done, but also the healthy habits that will make you better. So be sure to check out that video and get a lot more tips on how to activate your overall productivity. For me, I do stream three days a week. So I love to add in those streams so I can have an idea of Here's what I'm doing today. Here's maybe what I can get done on my productivity streams. I pretty much do a lot of my content planning and content work overall. So I try to get into the nitty gritty of the details of what I'm actually going to be doing over in Notion. But here on GCal is kind of a digital overview of what exactly I need to do. Overall, what really comes into play and really <laughs> stills my heart when it comes to GCal is the ability to collaborate with other people. A lot of us have Google calendars. A lot of us have Google Gmail accounts. A lot of us are pretty familiar with it. So if you want to collaborate with your spouse or even collaborate with someone else, on a digital product or content is super easy to do that within GCal. Makes it super easy to schedule appointments and reads with them. What I use the collaboration feature mostly for is with our podcast. We are both going back and forth, scheduling different things. We have different things that we have to do for our Patreon as well as record on a bi-weekly basis. So being able to have that collaboration feature within GCal is a must. As you can see here, my colorway for the planners and wine is this light beige and we can click on overall is how a typical schedule event is going to look. The beauty of this is that either one of us can go in and make arrangements, change up or whatever it is we need to do guests on the show or if someone has an emergency and needs to change the time of when we record either one of us can truly hop in and make those changes and it's super simple to add in a separate calendar to be able to collaborate you'll just head over to settings and on the far left hand side you're going to see add calendar just click on that drop down list you can create a new calendar you can browse calendar you can subscribe to a calendar and you will give the person different permissions based off what you want to see. So say if you are a team and you just want people to be able to see when you are available and when you're not, but not necessarily the details of exactly what's going on, you can limit to them just seeing that you're available during that time. I can see that really coming in handy with a company type business. But if you are co-host for a podcast or collaborating with someone on an actual project, and y'all need to see exactly what is going on on each one, you can pretty much show everything as well. You're gonna wanna go ahead and head over to your settings and click on add a calendar and subscribe to calendar. Now, when you want to add a calendar, this will be the calendar that you wanna add. So I am on my personal calendar. So let's say I want to add my social media calendar. So that will be by my repeat. So I'm gonna put in the Gmail account for by my repeat. And a lot of stuff is already on here because I'm already collaborated with it, but we can change up the name if we want to change the name. If I wanted to make this social, social media, I can go ahead and add that. Setting changes as you type it in are automatically saved. So whatever you change in real time is saved. You can add on a description. So if this is, again, your content calendar, or if this is a calendar that you use with you and your spouse, you can put that details in there. Time zones, original owner, Da, da, da. You need to scroll down to make the additional changes. Like I said, it's already in the one. So unless I delete it, there really isn't any way to change the settings. But once those changes there, the other file owner or other account owner will actually get an email asking if permission is allowed. And then on their end, they will actually give you the permission that you can have. So on my other account, I did say that you can make changes and manage settings. So basically on my personal account, I am able to fully see 
my content planning account may change up things this is perfect if you are collaborating with someone but there is like, different modes that you can see so if you just want someone to see if you're available so they don't put something and double book you on your calendar you can totally do that that probably works really good with like workspaces where you don't want people all up in your business but don't double book me for a meeting if I'm going to be at the dentist at 1 p.m. You know, those settings will have to be updated by the exact file owner. But once everything is all approved and your settings are there, you will then be able to see the actual calendar. And if, for instance, you're off work for a week or you don't want to see your content, you can, again, Go ahead and uncheck certain things, add it back, it's super simple. So there you have it. That's how I use Google calendars within my day to day. I hope you picked up some few tips to really elevate your calendar and get you being the most productive self you can be. Let me know in the comments down below what tip has really been helpful for you. What are you gonna implement? I would love to hear more about it. Now, if you are a productivity loving girly just like me, check out this playlist. I think there are gonna be a few videos there that is really going to get you on your way and I will see you in those videos.